fitting a special camera mounting in the workshop. When I recently visited John Mills in his double boost workshop, he kindly gave me a Manfrotto magic arm. In this video I show the making and fitting of the camera mounting. Here is the magic arm, it is really clever. You just operate the middle lever which locks it all very solid or lets it flop about, which allows perfect positioning of the camera. There's a very robust clamp that allows me to clamp it to the lathe bed. In this video I'm going to make a couple of specially shaped bushes to allow me to fix this head to it. I have four of these swivel type heads and they're quite good quality, this one is not as good as the others. And all I really need to do is make two specially stepped washers to allow me to bolt this to the top fitting of the magic arm, which is 16mm in diameter. Here's the tripod head that I have fitted to a shelf. This allows me to adjust the position of the camera to film what's going on in the Boxford lathe. The only problem with this arrangement is that the swivel head is mounted to the shelf, and often when I'm turning the handles on the Boxford, the lathe cabinet and the lathe itself move slightly on the floor. Really, I should bolt it down. This swivel head has never been good. It's always been a bit wobbly on the rotary part. But now I've dispensed with that part of it, and instead I'm going to mount it solidly to the magic arm. I need to make two special shaped bushes, and one is a different size to the other. Don't ask me why. It seems to make no sense at all, but they're both different sizes. All they have in common is a centre part, which is 16mm in diameter. 16mm is more or less 5 8 of an inch. I've fitted a nice piece of alum bronze in the chuck. This stuff is horrible to machine, but it's only horrible if the tool that you're using is blunt. This particular replaceable tip on the lathe tool is about halfway through its life. But it's OK for this job, it's not a very important part anyway. And yes, I know that's not the way to look at it really, but I'm only making a pair of stepped washers that you won't be able to see when they're fitted. This is turning OK, it is at least looking shiny, but the further I get in, if you look closely, you can see that it's looking a bit bruised. I'm going about this job in entirely the wrong way really, I just wanted to show quite a lot of machining operations over a longer distance using alum bronze with a tool that isn't sharp. In no time at all, I turned the alum bronze to fit into the hole in the camera mounting. And I turned the centre part all the way down to 16mm. And as you can clearly see, the finish isn't all that good on the 16mm turn part. I centre drilled the work in the previous clip and now I'm drilling all the way through using a quarter of an inch diameter drill to accept a quarter width with bolt, which is the thread in the top of the Magic Arms fitting. Now it's time to part off the first half of the step fitting. Nothing special here, the tool is quite a long way out from the tool post, but Allen Bronze does cut very well if the tool is sharp and this parting tool is very sharp. Machining Allen Bronze is very similar to machining brass and gunmetal, except it feels a good bit more slippery. In this clip, once again I'm using the parting tool to reduce the diameter of the piece of bar. I've turned the outer part to the correct diameter to fit into the camera mounting. And as I've already said, both sides were a different diameter and I really don't know why. As always, I'm using a file with a handle to remove any sharp edges. Once I got the second step bush to look like this, I just parted it off in exactly the same way as you've just seen with the other one. The parting off wasn't 100% clean because the blade is perfectly flat. If I was to grind it at an angle, it would part off a lot more cleanly. But it's easy enough to fit the part in the chuck and use a standard lathe tool to clean off the bit where the parting tool broke through. And over a very short space of time, the parts appeared on the bench. Two step washers, both different diameters, to fit either side of the swivel. Complete with a suitable mounting bolt. Here you see how it works. You just undo the handle in the middle, you can move it to any position you like, and then you just relock the handle in position. What it does is moves three ball bearings into three slots. It's incredibly clever and very simple. What you do have to remember, though, is to make sure you hold the camera before you release the locking lever in the middle. This mounting is now fitted to my Smart and Brown lathe, but unfortunately the lighting is not so good on it. I need to put some more lights above it. As I move the magic arm about, you get the idea of what it's capable of doing. The image only looks wobbly because I'm wobbling the arm. 
Once I lock it in position, that's it. If the lathe moves, then the camera moves with it. This lathe weighs about 1.2 tonnes, so it doesn't move much on the floor when I turn the hand wheels. Just to make sure you know what this is, it's on screen. A Manfrotto Magic Arm. The original fitting on top of the Magic Arm is really a light fitting, so you could use it to have a light in the right place. But for my application, I need it to hold my camera, and I hope it continues to do so. My thanks go to John Mills for giving me this Magic Arm and opening my eyes to different possibilities that I knew nothing about. In John's workshop, his main lathe camera comes down from a bar from the ceiling, which is an even better idea. But this will be okay for me for the moment. I'll give my electrician friend a call to fit some brighter lights over the smart and brown lathe. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.